What's going on squad? Chris with Unlimited Squad, your personal ISO chain and fitness vlogging channel. Today we're going to talk about yielding isometrics. This is the uh, follow-up to the overcoming isometrics video. If you haven't seen that video, here's a link right here. Check that out. There's a difference between yielding and overcoming with yielding being the version of isometric training that most fitness individuals are familiar with, which is why I got the hard one out first. Let's get into this. So all yielding isometric training is, is holding an object or weight and trying to prevent gravity from bringing it down to the ground. So why people are familiar with this one is, if you think about your planks, your wall sits, your six inches exercises, or even holding a barbell or dumbbell or whatever and doing a curl, here we go, ready? Eccentric, concentric, eccentric, concentric, isometric. Now we're holding it, we're holding it, we're holding it, and when the load is high enough, we start to feel a burn in that same muscle group in question. We're not moving. This is isometric training. This is a style of isometric training called yielding, trying to prevent gravity from bringing this weight in question down to the floor, and the more we try and resist over time, the more it's going to burn. When should we use yielding isometric training? Pretty much under three specific scenarios, though there may be more, and if there are, comment down below. The first one would be trying to be less resistance to fatigue, aka building up our muscular endurance. The second, which is what I'm familiar with when I was coming up, I guess, man, that made me sound old, is uh, increasing mass. And you think, okay, well, just do weights for that. Well, this is weights, it's holding. If you ever done a bicep curl, but you held it in between each set, so here it looks like this. One, two, one, control. One, two, two, control. That is yielding isometric training when you hold it for those three second contractions in the middle. It's already dying on the concentric and um, the eccentric phase, but that those three seconds are an eternity when programmed correctly um, in the right training pre uh, regimen and protocol. Oh my God, I mean, it burns. And the third one, which is kind of underrated of the three, teaching muscle control. What better way to teach our body about controlling muscle force output than trying to hold something when the, you can feel the strength leaving your body and you have to auto-regulate how much strength is going into that specific contraction. It is fantastic. Highly recommend utilizing this style of training. Now both, in my opinion, have a purpose in anyone's fitness training program, both overcoming and yielding. But yielding, you will probably find a lot more and it's easier to slide into existing programs. Overcoming, you have to program it a little bit differently, but it still can be in there. Speaking of overcoming, it's easier than overcoming. Why? Because overcoming isometric training is all out, 100% max effort. And you think that'd be easy, but no, no it isn't. Because of the cortical inhibition and loading reflex, that makes it a lot tougher than one might think. And you have to train yourself into not having those two limiting factors get in the way of overcoming isometric training. If you're unfamiliar with those, here's a link right here. Go ahead and check those videos out. I cover them in detail. With yielding, all we need are the weights that we've already been using. So if we were already, you know, shoulder pressing 95 pounds, all right, now all we have to do to really start busting through plateaus, which is almost into my next point, is you just, it's the same thing as a bicep curl exercise, uh, demo I did earlier. Just boom, one, two, one, one, two, two. That's it, that's it, that's yielding. It's so much easier. You don't have to do anything different except a hold. In fact, most people are like, oh, is that all that is? Because most people just call it holds. I did for years until I got the proper term for it when I started studying for my cert. I'm like, oh, okay, so that's what that, that's what the bros at the gym called it. Oh, so the holds were just yielding isometric training. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Were they using the right loads for yielding though? Uh, debatable. But anyway, like I said, it goes into my next point, which is it's useful for sticking points. So say for example, that same shoulder press example I just gave. And our sticking point is here. Now I have a whole video on sticking points in the ISO chain. If you haven't seen that, here's a link right here. Check that 
out. Using isometric training is fantastic for breaking through sticking points. Now, so is overcoming too, believe it or not. Believe it or not. But I'm just co covering this aspect here. We're good with our shoulder press. Diane, I'm, I'm talking about barbell right now, or dumbbell. And we're good here. And we're good all the way up to, one, to about here. So what we would do is, we, with the iso chain, we set the link to here and focus on pushing. Now that's overcoming. Now if we wanted a yielding, just imagine that this is the same bar that we normally use for our regular training. You set it to the same weight that you're having trouble with. Now you hold it. One, two, one. And then finish the rep, come back down, boom, push, hold it. One, two, two, push through the motion, come all the way down, push, hold it. One, two, three. I'm making sense here, it's fantastic. Why? Well, as I've mentioned on the channel many, many times, isometric training is fantastic for strength. But it's also great for size. Why? Because time under tension, guys, one of the main principles to make a muscle grow. We might have the strength, stimulus, and we got stronger, maybe in that specific lift or exercise. You know, if you want the, probably the best example of that, it's my legs. My legs, I've trained my legs since day one. One, one, 2009, I haven't missed a freaking beat. But, but here's the thing. For a lot of my training for legs, I just kept focusing on strength, literally from the beginning. And while I did see some hypertrophy gains, primarily, I got strength gains. So they don't look like they can produce the amount of force that they can, but they have the strength. It goes deep, guys. Following up on that, there's three more reasons that we wanna use yielding isometric training. The first being, if you're injured, I actually have a client I'm training online right now on the ISO chain. I gotta be careful with his injuries. He, for one of them, he cannot do it overcoming. So what we do is we set the ISO chain to time mode and use average and max mode to get stronger at that lift without putting everything he has into it for a six second maximal contraction. Am I making sense here? So now he's getting stronger. The concentric and eccentric phase of the lift AKA weightlifting, that hurts him. He cannot do that. But here, because there's a digital reader, we can see the force output there in real time, which is insane. And I can coach and train him up properly while avoiding injury. Do you understand how huge that is? Preventing injuries, just like the overcoming isometric video, where I talked about it's bulletproofing our joints, it's the same thing here. We're strengthening our tendons too, our, our connective tissues. There's tons of studies on this. And time under tension is huge, not only for muscle fibers, but also the connective tissues, tendons, the ligaments, and the person. The good stuff, what keeps you lifting for a very long time. And the third reason is kind of underrated. If we're pre-fatigued and we still want to get more out of our exercise program that day. Example, say we're doing the uh, tricep uh, dumbbell tricep skull crusher, right? So I got the dumbbell back here, boom, boom. I am near the end of my workout. I probably have about 10 minutes or less left. My triceps, all three freaking heads are on fire from all the tricep stuff I've been doing the last hour, or 40, 40 minutes, whatever. Well, I just can't, I can't produce any more force. It's just not gonna go up. All right, so what I would do, yielding isometrics, I hold it, where? Midpoint, boom, one, two, one. Extend all the way up, full contraction, eccentric, concentric, hold. One, two, two. Finish it concentric, eccentric, hold. One, two, three. That's yielding. It's great. It's like a drop set, but way better. It's more time under tension. I've used that technique for years. I really love doing it with the back extension, the Roman chair, and go figure, when I stopped doing that exercise and I scrapped it completely for the RDL, and focus more on heavy concentric with the eh on eccentric, my lower back strength diminished by a lot. Something to be said about that. So when we're strengthening our soft tissues with yielding isometric training, I highly recommend at some point transitioning to overcoming, not scrapping yielding completely, but overcoming is a, that's, that's a whole different beast in and of itself for isometric training. I recommend someone start with 
yielding first. Yielding is a lot easier to program. I prefer programming yielding near the end of my and my client's workouts. It seems to have the best results. There are exceptions to the rule, I am sure, but I've noticed that we have just been blasting through plateaus. Unless my client is straight up lying to me, I have yet to have a client backslide when I'm using this technique. I mean, it's just continual broken plateau, broken plateau, broken. Remember, the, the point of the strength training in the gym is to fatigue the muscle. We need to be crawling out of there safely, mind you, crawling out of there at the end of the session. Or otherwise, what did you do? What did you do? It's always about time under tension. And what better way than with this? I mean, there's literally isometric training is one of the safest ways to train because we get those shearing forces and the mechanical abrasion from dynamic movement. And dynamic movement isn't bad. Listen, I still lift. But by supplementing isometric training, some yielding, yes, and a lot of overcoming, I mean, it's, it's a whole different ballgame, guys. I highly recommend either yielding, overcoming, or both in your training. Watch breakthrough plateaus you may have been stuck on. Which brings me to my last point, by the way. When talking about the ISO chain, using time mode and average mode is almost a pseudo yielding isometric training. But it's still, here's the catch, it's still overcoming isometric training. Anything on the ISO chain is overcoming isometric training, which can be progressively overloaded because of the digital display on the feedback. But by pure definition of yielding isometric training, remember back in the beginning of the video, what is it? Holding a weight or object to prevent gravity from moving it. That is the opposite of anything on the ISO chain. Anything on the ISO chain is all force production pushing. Even if we lower the force output from maximal contraction, six second overcoming, to about 60 to 85 percent for those hypertrophy gains that I talked about on the channel before. If you don't know what I'm talking about, there's a link right here. Go ahead and check out those videos. It's fantastic knowledge. It's still overcoming the midpoint in between yielding and overcoming because it can't quite be called overcoming, but it can't quite be called yielding because overcoming is pushing with maximal force and yielding is holding against gravity. And that is neither a pure definition. So what I've been calling it is like a pseudo overcoming isometric training. What have you been calling it? Maybe you've been calling it something else, but comment down below. That'd be pretty cool to get some different opinions on that. It's still not moving, but holding it for time would fall more into the yielding category. Hopefully that made sense. Hopefully you guys got some great value from this. If you're new to the channel, you start incorporating these techniques and these training methods into your programming and watch the gains come, especially if you've been plateaued for a while. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to drop a like button, comment, and if you're not yet part of the squad, hit that subscribe button. Come join the squad with us. Let's get strong together. Let's see you in the next video. Peace.